happy monday afternoon tuesday afternoon <laughs> what day of the week is it anymore uh hi my name is beto sanchez and i am a elite designer at the salon at Ulta beauty in downtown chicago and i am taking over the facebook live of behind the chair so that's super exciting this is a great opportunity uh for me to get to know more artists and connect with more artists but also for you to be able to learn some techniques. I have so much stuff for you. Uh, I'm gonna try to make it quick and easy just so you understand what I'm doing. And I am, I, like I said, I work at the Salon at Ulta Beauty in Michigan Avenue where I work all of this color magic and all of this styling magic in my creations. So I'm gonna bring you today a color technique that I love to use behind the chair. So I love this technique because it's very salon friendly. You can totally customize it depending on what your clients require. So this is a very dimensional and very natural, like hyper natural looking highlights. So what this does is it allows for the client to have like beautiful finished hair, but also softer outgrowth, which everyone wants. And like I said, because you can customize it, you can up your ticket or you can just do a basic touch up because the holidays, we know they're crazy, right? So we wanna make sure that uh, we have a really good technique to offer to, the, uh, to our clients and give them the best type of look. So for those of you who don't know me on my Instagram, which is Beto Loves Hair, I love a really good come through moment. So I actually pre-styled one of my mannequin heads to show you what this technique is going to look like. So we have here all of that uh, natural highlight going on. Uh, this is kind of like balayage ombre style, but obviously giving it a little bit of a twist of that natural dimension here and there. And so before I get started with the technique, I just want to give you this wonderful, zen, satisfying moment of the day by combing through these waves. So hopefully this gets you excited to learn all of this color technique and to learn the styling technique as well. So as you can tell, this is a very uh, requested type of color. I think a lot of people at the salon want to have this softer outgrowth, beautiful uh, balayage transition between the darker at the top and lighter at the ends. And also I think that this styling technique, it really gives you beautiful curls that look very, very realistic. It almost looks like it's a client's natural texture. And so I am going to be also talking about this styling technique because it's really important that once we do a beautiful color, we finish it and we dress it exactly how the client needs it. I actually left one of the sections of my mannequin head completely smooth so you can actually see what the blend is going to look like. And like I mentioned, this is kind of like a mix of natural, but if you customize it to how the trends are right now, we are seeing a lot of those uh, really bright pops of color on the hair. And so I obviously did like the most amazing money piece face framing uh, highlight for her to feel like refresh and renew as well and gloss with a rose gold tone. So before we start uh, styling, obviously we'll do the coloring. So I'm going to let this little girl hang out here and we're going to start with the technique right away. So I have a mannequin head that is already pre-sectioned. So these are going to be my main sections that I will be working with the mannequin today. Uh, one is going to be the face framing piece, which as you can tell, it actually is the section that resembles how you would cut a fringe. So it's going to be a couple of inches from the back, depending on your client's density, and it's going to come down to the corner or, of her eyebrow. So that is going to be sectioned specifically for the face framing piece. Then we also have the top section that is going to be uh, everything around the crown. And if your client has any sort of cowlicks, I'm gonna make sure that I get that in the top section as well. Then we have two lower subsections, one on each side and divided right in the middle. I'll show you the reason why, but this is going to be another type of dimension that we'll create. And then the bottom section, this bottom section is going to be the most dimensional of every part of the look. So the reason why I wanted to section this way, it's because I took so much time sometimes at the salon creating this uh, super fine and very detailed baby lights. And I kind of got tired of seeing how those baby lights just get like washed out because all of this hair on top is just laying on it. And so we don't really get to see much detail about it. So I thought that the best thing that we could do is to give it a lot more dimension and a bolder type of look. So the sections underneath, 
something else that you want to customize, you can actually do a row of baby lights here for when your client puts it up. This can be just a regular baby light. But what I will do to begin with this section is grab horizontal slices. So why horizontal slices? Well, slices is what gives you the most dimension when you create um, highlight. And uh, horizontal slices will allow for everything to fall like a uh, like a veil of blonde on top of that hair. And so what I would do, because sometimes the slices can be a little too harsh right around the hairline, I actually will uh, create more of a blend or a blending technique in order to create this section that way. So there's two options that I can do. I can have my regular tail comb, or I can have this comb. This is actually a Y spark. And if you can tell, it has uh, a couple of set of bristles. So that helps me to push a little bit better the hair when I'm trying to do a TC light. So what I would do is I'm gonna make sure that everything is really uh, detangled. And I will grab a section. I don't have to worry about this section to be way too uh, skinny or too thin because I'm actually gonna push some hair out of the way, right? So the lightener that I will be using today is Wella Blondor. And I am using Wella Blondor mainly because I want to make sure that I have like clear consistency on the lightener from beginning to end. So I love Wella Blondor because it's dust free lightener, which means I already um, weight down the lightener. I made sure that it was one part of lightener powder to two parts of developer. And as you can tell, I can actually really um, work this lightener and make it blend with a developer and it's dust free, so it's not like dusting everywhere. And this is what the consistency of one to two of Blunder Lightener with Welluxon Developer will give you. So this is going to be, uh, for me, the perfect texture in order to create that amazing highlight. Uh, you can also do one to 1.5 for a thicker consistency if you wanna lift uh, quicker. Remember that thicker is quicker for lightener. And I can also do one to three if I want to create a little more of a, um, a saturation in through the, through the ends. So what I will do is I will grab this section horizontal. Like I said, this is going to be a slice, but in order to make this slice a little bit more easy towards the outgrowth and, and not have just like a blunt line right around here, and I'm actually gonna have my assistant today <laughs> to help me with a close up right around here, what I would do is I will pull the hair, make sure that it's completely detangled. And right around the middle is what I actually like to like to get my comb through and push all the way through. So as you can tell, you're already pushing a bunch of hair. I don't like to do many times that pushing because what it's doing is it's actually tangling the hair right here. So one or two pushes would be enough. And then I will use the same comb to kind of like lift it up and really secure that. Um, that uh, section around here. So I'm gonna use also the help of a board today. And with the board, I am going to put a sheet of foil right on top of it. I'm gonna fold it, secure this again. And I'm gonna make sure that this foil comes all the way to the top, right? Make sure that everything is very secure, perfect. So before I do the application, I also wanna talk about the brush. So I'm using a brush that has the bristles a little bit more like texture and softer because what I wanna create is a blend. I wanna make sure that I don't have like a harsh line. I wanna make sure that this bristles right here allow me to create a really nice blend. So I'm gonna use my first application of lightener and I don't wanna put it to the top because I don't wanna uh, have like a really strong line. I'm gonna start towards the middle to apply this lightener and create this saturation. Right around here. Make sure that this comb is really steady. So you start creating that saturation and then there's a couple of things that you can do with the help of the bristles. Once you get rid of a lot of product because you applied it here, you're gonna have like a quick flick with, uh, with your brush in order to create that soft uh, transition but towards the middle and everything all the way through the ends, I wanna make sure that I really do have a lot of saturation and I can do just that really soft flick of the wrist uh, in order to create that saturation. Now, once you did that, you can actually remove the, the comb and then you're gonna continue applying and creating the saturation all the way through. 
So what is important about uh, this type of sectioning and with any lightener, lightener service is that you wanna make sure that that hair is fully saturated because if sometimes you have like a blotchy spot or like some sort of like bruising in the lightener process is because everything wasn't saturated all the way through. So I want to make sure that that application is really, um, I really don't get to see the hair, which means it's completely covered in lightener. So once I do that, I will actually hold the foil. And because you created this blend right around here, you don't wanna put this end of the foil covering right where you did it. So you wanna make sure that this saturation goes with this saturation and then no saturation with no saturation. Cool. And so if you wanna secure it, I usually like to secure it on each side, one and two. So that way, when you, set, when you create the secure foil, you'll make sure that whenever you do the rest of the sections, this is not gonna be moving or it's not gonna be doing much. Uh, it's just gonna stay nice and steady right there. So the next section that I would do, because it's a little bit wider, I would actually grab all the way through, right? Making sure that the sections are nice and neat. Clip this out of the way. And then this is probably gonna be sectioned in two. What happens is if you try to do one single foil around this, you're gonna have corners around here that are not gonna reach and that are gonna try to escape the foil. So I'd rather to do two, this in two different sections. And again, I will grab another slice. And I'll make sure that if I did saturate right around here with highlights, I make sure that I skip a little section right around here. So same thing. I'm gonna make sure that this is a tangle first and then I'm going to push. I want you to notice that if I push with a, with a comb a little bit closer to the root, I'm not really getting much hair, right? But if I, the lower I push with this comb, the more hair I'm actually grabbing, creating a more dramatic tease. Now, here's the thing too. If you feel like you, your comb is not secure enough, you can actually grab one of those clips, the little dugbill clips. And once you secure that, you put the clip right there so this tease does not come up, right? And that way you don't have to be fighting with a comb in order to make sure that, that is, there's enough saturation there. So I make sure that I fold my, my foil in the back of the board just to make sure that when I am applying that product, this is not coming up. So I reach it all the way to the top. And here's another thing and another way you can create saturation. You start right in the middle. And instead of creating that flick, you're actually gonna start brushing and trying to make sure that you're not really pushing the product in there, trying to make sure that you're just on the surface painting, almost if you can think about balayage. So you're gonna, actually I'm gonna use this section to kind of like uh, make sure that I am saturating under this fold and then just brushing on the top. Perfect. Do we have any questions, Terry? Popping? Uh, the foils are Framar, of course. <laughs> I love uh, the Framar foils. I feel like they have uh, enough, um, they're sturdy enough where I can actually uh, place a board or even with my hand in the back. And they're not too soft and they're not too hard. They actually have uh, the perfect amount of tension that I want in a foil. So there, Framer, thank you for your question. Um, something I want to remind you too, uh, we're actually rewarding your uh, participation with questions and with comments. So make sure that you comment and you stay active because we do have a little surprise for you. Every time you comment and you make questions, you actually gain the chance to win a $100 Ulta Beauty gift card. So that Ulta Beauty gift card can be used for products, which you know that we have so many brands of skincare, we have so many brands for hair care, and um, now you can actually use it at the salon as well. So if you uh, get that $100 gift card, you can totally come to Chicago downtown, come to my Ulta Beauty salon, and I'll be more than happy to give you a service as well. So uh, make sure that you stay engaged, comment, questions, everything will give you the opportunity to participate and get that $100 gift card. Do we have any more questions, Jerry? Uh, 
So uh, for the most part in this section underneath, because I am doing slices, I actually wanna make sure that I have enough saturation. So uh, the board allows me to see uh, better where my saturation is, is going and to make sure that it's very saturated where I need it and it's soft where I need it. So yes, uh, for the most part in the slices, I do uh, use the board. Maybe in the top sections, I won't as much because the roundness of the head would help me to um, do the application like that. So that's a great question. Thank you for that. Yes, absolutely. So as you can tell, what I was doing with, uh, with all the saturation with the lightener, I'm actually uh, using almost like a balayage application, right? So I'm gonna do it with this foil. The saturation that I'm using is right under here. I'm creating a lot of saturation and towards the top, I'm making it a little softer. So to make sure that you are very saturated, even if you're using a slice of hair, I actually sometimes like to go through and actually push the product inside of the hair and just kind of like opening these little channels here to make sure that I'm really saturated. Sometimes just one single brush won't give you the saturation that you need. Sometimes you have to open it up or actually even go through with a comb and just kind of like press and comb that hair. And then once you do that, then you create one more layer because as you can tell, uh, you wanna make sure that the hair is completely covered. So that would be another advice with saturation as well. What is it we have, Jerry? Can you tell us more about that comb specifically? Yeah, for sure. So this comb, I actually got it uh, at the Wella Studio. Um, I believe it's a YS Spark. And what this, what it helps me a lot about this comb is that, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it has two sets of bristles. I'm going to show you in a second. It has two sets of bristles. So if you can tell, it's not just the longer ones, but also the finer and, and shorter ones. So that allows me that when I'm pushing the hair, it's actually getting two set, these two sets of, of brushes is helping me to create a much more neat uh, tease as well. So I'm gonna move into the next section. And this is when I said that you can totally customize this technique, right? So for example, right now I did what would be like two rows of slices. Uh, if your client has a lot of density, if she does not have a lot of lightness already, then you can actually do a lot more slices in between. But if you're doing, for example, a balayage to chop, then I can do only two sections of slices. And the really cool thing about uh, slices that not a lot of people um, create or use that opportunity is that once you finish this application for the top chop, you can actually see more clear what are the sections that you didn't grab. And so that way, when you're trying to create a lot of blonde and like super bright saturated blonde in the ends, you can actually grab the sections that you didn't use the last time. And that way you're not overlapping with the blonde and you're just building up more and more uh, blonde. And so that's why I like to do slices right here in the back. And like I said, I am doing this balayage technique underneath just to make sure that you don't have those like harsh lines that a slice can give you. So for those of you who, who just joined, what we're doing today is I'm actually showing a kind of like a balayage touch up uh, technique, and it's for very natural dimension. We wanna see very natural dimension through the hair, especially when we're waving or when we see it straight. Uh, so it, we started with the slices in the bottom section, and then we're gonna move on to the middle. So what's gonna happen in the middle, and the reason why I divided in two different sections is because I do like to switch it up here and not do as much of a horizontal um, subsection. I actually, I'm gonna start using diagonals. So what diagonals would do is it would soften right here at the root, and it would actually allow to spread more light through, creating this kind of like gaps of darkness and, and brightness as well. And so here's another way where you can customize it. You can actually keep moving with uh, your slices and you can push and create a slice. Or what I love to do around here, which is what I did with my mannequin finish that you can see right around here, all, this, all the parts in the middle, I actually did a medium weave. So what would be the difference of a medium weave and a baby light? So a medium weave, you grab a section, and I like to do medium weaves a little bit further out because that way I can create as much dimension as I want and I can show you with a paddle 
So this is what I would call a medium weave. This will give you uh, a lot of dimension because you can actually see the highlights, but you're not doing it horizontal, you're doing it diagonal. So everything is going to be over-directed. And when it's over-directed and when this falls in natural fall, you can see how everything looks a little bit closer together, correct? And so what I, what I like to do is to do medium weaves. If I am going to switch into a baby light, then what I would do is instead of uh, weaving from the middle, I actually weave from a little bit closer to the root because that allows me to be more precise on how my application is going to look like. So just to give you an example, look at the difference between a baby light when you do it, uh, when, the, when you do the weave closer to the root compared to when I weave from the middle, there were a lot more gaps. So when this falls in natural fall, and because it was a diagonal, do you see do you see how the dimension gets a lot more natural even if you created um, some uh, medium weaves in there so i'm going to start creating this diagonal section with a medium weave and remember every time you comment every time you ask a question you can uh, you enter to the chance to win a hundred dollar ulta beauty gift card as well do we have any more questions, Jairus? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you so much for that question. So Blondor, it's not a clay lightener. This is uh, this Blondor multi-powder has actually more of a um, type of pasty tech, uh, application and formulation, which is ideal to put it in the foils. What I want to do if I am doing balayage technique, I do need more of a clay lightener. So Blonder would be ideal for foils, but Blonder Free Lights would actually be even better for a balayage application. The difference between Blonder uh, multi blonde Powder and Free Lights is that Free Lights actually has a little bit more of a clay texture. So that allows for that thicker product to just sit on top of the, of the um, strand instead of being um, getting like running through or creating saturation that you don't necessarily need. And so as an example, I would do, for example, this foils with Blonder Lightener and with Blonder Free Lights, I would actually start balayaging this pieces if I'm starting from zero and I want a lot of saturation. So Blonder Free Lights looks like this. And this has actually has a different type of lightener, which the lightener for Blonder Free Lights always go together. This is going to give you more of the clay texture, and this is actually going to uh, mix together to allow for the application to be a lot more clean for balayage. So again, for balayage, Blonder Free Liner is better. Uh, for foils, I definitely recommend uh, Blonder Multi Powder as well. So um, I will continue with a couple of sections here, but what I wanna show you is the reason why I divide it in the middle is because my next section on the side it will actually mimic and mirror the other side. So I will start creating diagonals forward. And the reason why I wanna create diagonals forward is because if all this section goes in diagonals forward, it allows for the foils to sit nicely away from the client's, uh, client's face. So sometimes when the clients have like the, the foil just falling here on front of their face, it's probably not the best experience. And so what I would do is I would create diagonals to make sure that um when the foil is sitting there processing with the rest of the lightener i make sure that um, it's a nice experience for the client as well so all of these techniques that i am creating right now i actually do it at the salon ulta beauty and i am super excited when i decided to join ulta beauty because it gave me so many opportunities for me to grow my career and to really play with all of this uh obviously my favorite brand of color which is wella with lighteners and it also allows me to recommend so many hair care uh, brands that are really, really good for our clients. Um, obviously, as a hairstylist, I felt very supported during many moments, uh, which have been wild times right now with COVID and with lockdowns. And I felt very supported by my team uh, and by my group also of mentors, which is the pro team and the design team as well. So I am also part of the design team and what design team does is we go in different beauty shows and we actually share all this inspiration and we share all of the knowledge and all of the education that 
For example, me being a brand educator for Wella, uh, I love to share all that knowledge with all of you guys, with uh, everybody that we've seen in beauty shows. Hopefully they come back soon. But I've had the opportunity with Ulta Beauty to, to create that really nice environment. And obviously working at the salon, it's been uh, the best experience for me uh, without getting too much into the numbers. But honestly, being paid 70% commission of what I do, it's more than what I ever expected in any salon. So it's been a really rewarding uh, bunch of benefits that I've gotten uh, by working at the salon at Ulta Beauty. So we will always recommend that if you're looking for a home to work, uh, a home salon where you can feel welcome, where they feel like they actually take care of you and they pay fairly for what you do as an artist with hair, then I would definitely recommend you to look into the salon at Ulta Beauty. I work in the flagship location in downtown Chicago, but there's actually salons in Ulta Beauty in every single store. So if you didn't know that, go to your Ulta Beauty, go to the salon, ask to the manager. There's so many people that are right now looking for a, uh, for a home where they feel like they have a salon that will support them, that will pay fairly for what they do. And also when there's a lot of career growth and opportunity, just like what, what we're doing right now today. So once I uh, fill with foils all the way through, this is going to be the middle section as a refresher. The bottom section is going to be slices horizontal. The middle section, it's going to be diagonal and diagonal is back. So the foil, when you do it, you do it back and it's going to be a medium weave. Once I move into the top, then I'm actually going to create more of a baby light. And I'm going to show you what my definition of baby light is. I'm going to clip this out of the way right now to kind of like give you a better example of what it looks like. And I'm going to start creating diagonals and show you what I my technique for a baby light is. Uh, Jerry, do you have any questions so far? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So I love uh, when we're talking about curly hair, we want to make sure that everything that you create dimension wise is a lot more bold and a lot bigger because what happens with curly hair, it expands, right? So if you create really tiny baby lights, then when the hair expands, it's going to look just like washed out like on one single color. It doesn't even show the dimension as much. So you want to make sure that slices and medium weaves are going to be the way to go with curly hair. And I love that you do that, uh, that you ask that question, because uh, this can also be customized as technique with a, uh, with, a, with a curly hair as well, textured client. What other questions do we have, Jerry? Do you tease back comb the entire head while doing that process? Uh, that's a great question as well. So what you can do is I would tease and back comb the sections that are more bold. So for example, the slices and the medium weaves right at the top, I won't tease because I do want to have some dimension that reaches all the way to the top. So I will show you with the mannequin when I'm finished too. Uh, so you can take a look, but, uh, I will tease only in the bottom sections right on the top. I won't, you can, if you want, if you want to have a softer outgrowth, but that's totally up to you. In this case, and in my mannequin head, I did not really tease. I created a baby light like this. I grab a diagonal section. And like I said, when, every time I do a baby light, I like to do it close to the root to make sure that I see with very uh, much detail what kind of weaving I am doing. So once I pull it, I actually section, from that section that I separated already, I weave again, because that way you're actually only picking like the very, very fine, um section that you can apply for a baby light so in this case i will use my board again my framer foils and i'll pull it right at the top as close as i can to the root so the reason why i am not uh, teasing here is because i do want to have this section as much saturated as possible remember we started with slices and then we moved into medium weaves now we're doing baby lights so as you can tell that's actually going to give you that gradient lots of blonde, medium blonde, and then just a soft outgrowth here. So as a rule, the first time that I apply with my lightener, I do it a couple of inches below. Once I actually brush that product through this section and I don't have as much anymore, then I start approaching the top section. So I don't have all that uh, lightener escaping the foil while it's processing as well. And so same thing that I did with the previous sections, just make sure that I have enough saturation here and there and all the way through 
to the ends as well. What other questions we have, Jerry? Why do we diagonal over seven? Diagonal that's a great question. And that, that's why I was specifying. Uh, I want to do diagonal forward because when the foil lays as a as a client is processing, it will lay back instead of laying forward. So it's a better experience for the client to have the foils all neatly arranged back instead of having them all towards the face. Uh, that's also totally up to you, but I just like to provide the best experience to my clients, and I think that uh, foiling them that way uh, allows me to allows them to just you know keep doing their work now that everybody's working from home and sometimes at the salon as well and while they're processing and making it a lot more neat for them so this is one of the things that you can actually decide on your own so if i um if i want two or three levels of lift i start with 10 volume and then i move 10 volume to 20 volume and 30 volume when I do the front, then I would do with a 40 volume possibly, but sometimes I don't even have to jump into that. Uh, 20, 30 volume are gonna be the most recommended. 10 volume, if you don't need a lot of brightness and you just wanna create dimension. 40 volume is just in very extreme cases. If I already had, for example, all this processing for like a whole hour and I'm finishing right on the top and I have just a couple of sections of hair, then that's when I will use the 40 volume. Remember 40 volume is gonna lift a lot for 15 minutes and then it's just gonna start slowing down. So there's no point in doing a 40 volume here, it's just too aggressive. So I would always customize it to 10, 20, 30. And then if I need a 40 volume, that's how I use it. So that was a great question. Thank you very much. The next section I am going to do, uh, right now I'm working with the top subsection, right? So the next one, I'm gonna start actually intersecting these diagonals. And what that's going to do is I'm gonna create a section that is parallel to the first one. So, uh, I didn't mean parallel, sorry, <laughs> perpendicular to this one. So I want a section that creates almost like a T in any angle where the next section would be. So once I grab this, this part that is perpendicular to this, it's almost like intersecting diagonals. And what I did to remind you how I create my baby lights, I go really close to the root and I create a very fine weave. And then once I separated that weave, I use the top section and I actually weave again. What that's doing is it's removing a lot of the hair and you are left with really fine baby lights that will help you to do a very soft transition. And it automatically uh, creates that kind of like soft outgrowth because you're leaving a lot of root uh, and a lot of shadow at the top. So you're just creating these really tiny baby lights that will help you connect the blend in the bottom and all of that extra brightness to the top section as well. As you can tell, I am applying a lot of lightener here. I wanna make sure that I have saturation. And then I am just brushing through just if you wanna com come closer so you guys can see. So with this baby light, right? I am creating a lot of saturation right around here. Once all of that lightener is combed through and brushed through, can you tell that in the tip of the brushes, there's not as much? So that's when I start kind of like feathering right on the top. Like I mentioned earlier, I do this because I don't want a bunch of lightener to just be sitting here. And then when I close the foil, it's going to start escaping outside of the foil. So I rather have a lot of saturation in the bottom. And then once I already use all that lightener for the rest of the section, then I use the tip of my brush that doesn't have as much liner and I just feather like this. And then I just continue creating the rest of the saturation, making sure that I don't see the hair. When I don't see the hair is when I know that I have a really nice application for, for that saturation and that I am going to have a really nice lift right around here. And then what I do is I don't have any lightener right here in the tip of this foil. So I am totally fine by just putting it towards the middle. And then one more fold. And I use my comb to create this really nice fold in order to keep the foil like really organized. So that way, if you have to do a root application, if you have to run this foil through, um, you can just like move it and it's gonna stay always the same. If you feel like you need to do a root touch up with color in between, 
you can always secure the secure and lock the foil by just adding the top two sections and folding it one more time. So that's gonna make sure that it's like extra secure and that foil is not going anywhere as well. Perfect. So the top section in the front, what I would do once I am done with the baby lights all the way in the top, I would probably recreate the exact same technique. And instead of just going with a really fine, with a really uh, bold highlight here or a slice, I want to avoid that when the client ha she has this strict struck of, bl of blonde, <laughs> when she pushes back, I don't want her to see this really tight chunk, right? So what I would do is the first session that I would do it will be a baby light just to kind of like mimic everything she has around the hairline. And then the section in the back, it will do a full slice in order to create a really thick uh, weaving as well. So this is also something that you can customize, but I really like to do a baby light first, the way I created the first section, and then right behind it, a weave. And I can actually either tease or I can just put everything in the foil, in the foil as well. So we're gonna go back to the finished mannequin and I'm gonna show you what that technique creates right around here. So in the back, we can see that those slices and those sections will allow you to have like a lot of dimension in there if you wanna have a, uh, take a closer look. You're gonna see how underneath through you have all this really nice dimension and all of those pop up highlights coming through even if the client's natural hair would be a level four. And then because you have really fine weaves on the top, then all of these sections, the intersecting diagonals and the really fine baby lights will allow you to have a lot more dimension all the way through the top. So it doesn't look outgrowth, right? There's a difference between having solid dark and a little bit of a baby light here and there. So that's what's gonna create the best type of dimension. And then to finish my mannequin head, like we still have one more uh, section that we need to finish. I will use my uh, soft curl wand. So this is my GHD soft curl wand. I just turned it on and it's gonna uh, heat up in 25 seconds, which is great. Sometimes I'm not even done sectioning and I already have that um, ready to go. And I will create a section right around to the side. And what I do to style and to finish this super natural type of weave and this natural finish of the color, I will use my soft curl uh, iron to create um, two sections that go in opposite direction. So I will wrap the hair around the hair, around this, uh, the barrel. I let it sit for a couple of seconds. And then I brush through and I lift it up again. And then I let it for a couple of seconds and I run it through, rewrap the hair, run it down. So this is going to be away from the face. I do half a turn couple of seconds, run it through and create this wrapping around the barrel as well. What questions do we have, Jers? Would your sectioning change if the client parts their hair on a particular side? Um, yes. So in the front section that we created where you can see all this bold dimension, uh, yes, if your client does a really far part to the side, I would absolutely move that triangle to where the center of the part is. If it's in the middle, just by creating this section that is uh, kind of like basically how you would do a fringe, I would actually cut it right around the corner and a couple of inches back. But um, there's people that have uh, those really, they push the hair to the side and I would definitely try to do uh, more of an adjustment with how I section that front, um, that front. But the top section around the crown, I will leave it exactly the same. I would just modify and customize right at the front where the fringe is. What other questions do we have?
you continue to regulate all the way into the money piece? Yes, absolutely. So the money piece is that uh, triangle section that we created. So that uh, I would do everything all the way to the top and then create a different section with mixed baby lights and slices in the front. But all the crown area, I will do it with the baby light section as well. So that's a great question. What size iron is this? Oh, that's a great one. So the size of this iron, the soft girl one, is one and a quarter inch. So I like one and a quarter inch because I feel like the bigger barrel, it gives me actually a lot more, um, a lot more volume in the waves that I create with my client. And so uh, one and a quarter is the best for me. This is the soft curl iron. And of course it's available at Ulta Beauty as well. Is there a favorite form you recommend for any hair type and head shape? Um, so the board, it just complete, like, so there's different styles of boards and there's a lot of boards now that it started becoming a little popular. I am using the Framar board because it's just completely flat and it actually has a little bit of a curve on the top. So that curve allows me to kind of like put it right next to the, to the hair and to the client's head and it makes me get really close. So I will give you a quick example. So this is my Framar board and in the top you have this kind of like slightly curve. So when you put it against the head, it helps for that curve to really like touch the client's uh, scalp and get as close as possible. So I'm continuing with this, um, this sectioning for the style. And I remember that one section is going to go away from the face and then another section is gonna go towards the face. I'm trying to create um, and complement that very natural dimension that I created with the styling as well. And my last section, I try to do always everything that is right away from the face, not in the hairline. I try to do it on the direction that will push the hair forward with the same technique that I'm doing. I am unwinding the, the hair and then kind of like rewrapping. And then the front section, everything around the hairline, I always like to do it away from the face. But having those two directions would actually help you to, uh, to create more volume and to have a lot more texture on the style. Perfect. And so now onto that satisfying moment of uh, the very beginning, I have this section. And this is funny because this, cur this type of curl always looks very interesting before dressing it but I'm using a white tooth comb. And once I actually run all this waves through, do you see how much volume and how much texture you're actually creating in this style? And when you wave the, the hair like this, you can actually see all of those baby lights that I did in the front and all the top section, all of those medium weaves that I created in the back. And then underneath all of those uh, slices that will really help you to create uh, that type of, that type of style. And just to finish this beautiful rose gold style that I created, I will use my Sebastian Shaper ID, which is a texturizer. So I just spray it through all of the hair. And make sure that I just like run it with my fingers so I don't see any product. And with this texturizer, you will notice that it actually helps you to play a lot with, with the hair as well. So you can, um, you can just like spray it and just build that shape in there and maximize the volume of this style. And we have our finished mannequin. Obviously, she is more than ready for a new year. She is ready for the holiday season. This color makes her look like it's her natural hair color, but yet uh, it does have that really nice dress and that really beautiful customized section. I, she even did the makeup for you guys. So she even got her makeup done. And this is the final uh, product that we're gonna do with the technique underneath. 
uh, with a technique that we went through uh, using slices, medium weaves, baby lights, and a mix of baby lights and slices as well. And then styling with my soft curl wand as well. So you guys, good luck on that, um, on that uh, price, $100 for an Ulta Beauty card is a great, uh, great opportunity to go to the store, get your favorite skincare, get your favorite hair salon service, or your favorite hair, uh, hair color as well. So thank you so much for being here today. My name is Beto Sanchez again, elite designer at the salon at Ulta Beauty and also well educator. So follow me on Instagram for more tips, which is Beto Loves Hair. And thank you so much for behind the chair to allow me to share all the secrets and all of these tips that I hope they inspire you to do even better at the salon, to grow your business. Uh, don't forget to contact all your Ulta uh, salons in case you need a salon home. I am super happy working with them, uh, part of being, part, being part of the design team and working with the pro team, but also my job at the salon is just amazing. I love having the team that we've built together and I really recommend that you come join us. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Mwah.